This video for second order responses is a tutorial on overdamped systems. Now, we're going to assume that students have been through the earlier videos in this series and now are competent at calculating second order responses. So the purpose of this video is to provide you some tutorial questions which you can use to test your understanding. What we want you to do is read the questions first then pause the video and then attempt an answer. Only view the solutions provided once you've made a proper attempt. Now some background. We're talking about second order systems. You can see a typical uh, differential equation representation here or a transfer function representation here. We will deal with both. We're going to assume zero initial conditions for convenience because non-zero initial conditions don't really add to insight. They just complicate the number crunching. Now, because we're dealing with overdamped systems, we're also making the assumption that b squared is bigger than 4ac. You'll see the coefficients a, b, and c here. And therefore, the polynomial has real roots. You can solve for the characteristic roots using this polynomial here. And the implication of there being real roots, if I look at the transfer function, is that the inverse Laplace um, comes from this form. I can separate into simple um, residues a over s plus p1 plus b over s plus p2 and something over s. And therefore the solution will comprise a couple of exponentials and a constant. First question then. Solve the following differential equations to find x of t given zero initial conditions. Now is the time to pause and try your answers I'm now going to move to some solutions. Right, first thing to do then is write out the characteristic equation, which for this is going to be p squared plus 5p plus 4, or hopefully it's obvious you can write this as p plus 4, p plus 1. So we've got roots at minus 4 and minus 1. And therefore the solution is going to take the form x equals a e to the minus 4t plus b e to the minus t. So those exponentials correspond to those roots. And I can do the constant term by inspection by looking at the steady state 4x equals 1. That's going to come out as plus 0 0.25. Next, I use the initial conditions in order to solve for a and b. So x of 0 equals 0 equals a plus b plus 0 0.25. Next, x dot of 0, which will be equal to minus 4a minus b, is also equal to 0. And this gives me that b equals minus 4a. So what I can do is I can take this equation here and plug it in here. And therefore what I'm going to get is a minus 4a plus 0.25 equals 0 or hopefully you can see by inspection therefore a equals 0 0.25 over 3 and b is, which is minus 4a is therefore minus 1 over 3. Now, I'll write it down this time, but in future we won't bother because that bit is obvious. Therefore, you've got x equals 0 0.25 over 3e e to the minus 4t minus e to the minus t over 3 plus 0 0.25. You'll notice I've just taken the a and b and plugged them in up here. Next one then, 5x double dot plus 15x dot plus 10x equals 15. So again, we write out the characteristic equation. It's going to be p squared plus 3p plus 2, which is clearly p plus 2, p plus 1. And therefore, our solution takes the form x equals a e to the minus 2t plus b e to the minus t. And again, I can write the constant by inspection by matching the 10x to the 15. I get plus 
1.5. Substitute in our initial conditions. x of 0 gives us a plus b plus 1.5. Our other initial condition, x dot of 0, is going to be minus 2a minus b equals naught. I forgot to put the equals naught there. And therefore, I've got b equals minus 2a. And so again, I can use this expression and plug it in here. So I get, what I get is a minus 2a plus 1.5 equals naught, which tells me that a equals 1.5 and b equals minus 3. You can now obviously put those numbers back in this expression up here. Next one then. 0.2x double dot plus 1.6x dot plus 2.4x equals 0.4. So the characteristic equation for this is going to be p squared plus 8p plus 12 equals 0. You'll notice I've multiplied throughout by 5 to make the 0.21 so that the polynomial is monic. Now this can be written by inspection as p plus 6, p plus 2. So you've got roots of minus 6 and minus 2. Therefore, x equals a e to the minus 6t plus b e to the minus 2t plus, and the constant in this particular case is going to be 1 over 6 by matching the 2.4x to the 0.4. <coughs> Substitute in my initial conditions. 0 equals a plus b plus 1 over 6. And x dot of 0 equals minus 6a minus 2b equals 0. And so what does that tell me? It tells me that b equals minus 3a. So I substitute that in as before. And I get 0 equals a minus 3a plus 1 over 6, which gives me that a equals 1 over 12, and b equals minus 3 over 12. Question 2. Solve the following to find y of t and comment. And you'll see the only difference here is we've now used transfer functions rather than differential equation type format. Again, now's the time to pause and try them before I move to the solutions. Now, in this case, I'm going to use partial fractions. But before I do that, you need to spot what the pole polynomial is. So hopefully it's obvious that you can write this as s plus 0.2, s plus 0.3. So now I can write 0.12 over s, s squared plus 0.5s plus 0.06 equals a over s plus 0.2 plus b over s plus 0.3. And I can see again what the constant is by inspection um, because I've got it's going to be 0.12 over 0.06. So I've written that straight in as 2 over s. Now I can use the cover up rule to find a and b. So in order to do a, what I'm going to do is cover up the s plus 0.3 and substitute s equals minus 0.2. So I get 0.12 over minus 0.2. And then I've got to do the s plus 0.3, which is minus 0.2 plus 0.3. And what does that give us? It gives us 0.12 over minus 0.2 times 0.1. And that's going to give us minus 6. In order to get the b, I've got to cover up the s plus 0.2 factor and set s equal to minus 0.3. So I get 0.12 for minus 0.3 times minus 0.3 plus 0.2, which gives me 0.12 over 0.3 times 0.1 which is going to give me 4. And you'll see in slide 3 of this show, it tells you once you've got a and b, the inverse Laplace is by inspection. 
Next one. 24 of s, s squared plus 20s plus 96. So I'm going to write this straight down in factorised form. Um, so clearly we've got an s plus 12 and an s plus 8 make up this denominator. So I can now write a over s plus 12 plus b over s plus 8 plus, and I can do the constant by inspection again, it's 24 over 96, so I get 0 0.25 over s. Again, we'll use the cover up rule to get a and b. So in order to get a, I'm going to set s equal to minus 12 and cover up the s plus 12. So I get 24 over minus 12 times minus 12 plus 8, which is going to give me 24 over minus 12 times minus 4, which is going to give me 0 0.5. And the b, I set s equal to minus 8 and cover up the s plus 8, so I get minus 8 into minus 8 plus 12, which is going to be 24 over minus 32, which is minus 0.75. Question 3. Now the key thing here is to note the use of the word approximate. Find approximate solutions to the following and comment. Right, so the first one, what have we got here? We've got x double dot plus 10x dot plus 9x equals 18. And what do you notice? If I do the characteristic equation, then I've got p squared plus 10p plus 9, which is p plus 9, p plus 1. So we notice it's, I should use the word, very over damped. And therefore, we can ignore the fast mode if we want an approximate solution. So we can write down that x is going to be approximately now I can do the constant by inspection again, it's 2, and then I can put a e to the minus t, i.e. we only look at the slow mode. And then if I use my initial condition x of 0 equals 0, I'm going to get a equals minus 2. So I'm done. But remember this is an approximate solution which you can use because the system is very overdamped. This one's very similar. If you do the characteristic equation, you see you get p squared plus 22p plus 40, which I can write as p plus 20, p plus 2. So again, you'll see these two roots are widely spaced. And therefore, I can approximate, and that's the key word, we're using an approximate solution using just the slow mode. So I'm going to write x equals, now the constant in this term is going to be 0 0.2, then I have plus a e to the minus 2t, taking only the slow mode, and if I use my initial condition, that implies a equals minus 0 0.2. But please remember, I should not use an equals, I should do an approximate there because we've ignored the fast mode. Now, this is a similar <coughs> question, except I've posed it in terms of Laplace transforms. So, let's see what we get if we write this out in factorised form. So, we've got 0 0.003 over s, s plus 0.15 s plus 0 0.01. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I can write this roughly as a over s plus 0 0.01 plus, and again I can do the constant by inspection, 2 over s. What do you notice? I've not included the s plus 0 0.15 because I've said these poles are widely spaced and therefore I'm going to sort of ignore the the fast mode. And when I ignore it, I'm going to cover up that S there. And what do you see that I get? I just get left with a 0.15. So now, 
If I do my cover up rule to find a, you'll see you get a equals 0.003 over minus 0.01 times 0.15. And that will give me minus 2. Again, this one is very similar, so we'll do it very quickly. We've got 950 over s, and then it's s plus 5, s plus 95. Again, you see they're very widely spaced, so I'm going to say I can approximate this, as I should put an approximate there to be clear, as a over s plus 5 plus, and in this particular case, um, what's the constant? It's going to be 2 over s. If I do my cover-up rule, when I do my cover-up rule, I'm first going to pretend that there's no s there, and that's just 95 because I've ignored that particular pole. So doing the cover-up rule, I get a equals 950 over minus 5 times 95, which gives me minus Now, just a quick reminder, you can use MATLAB to check your solutions, so we'll give a quick demonstration here, as that may be helpful. So what we've got, we've got some of these solutions written up here. So question number one, you can see there's my D solve, and you'll see it's given the solution that you got in the question. 1 over 12 e to the minus 4t, minus 1 over 3 e to the minus t, and plus a quarter. Or the next one of question one. There you'll see the statement I've used, and you'll see the answer. 3 over 2 e to the minus 2t, minus 3 e to the minus t, plus 3 over 2. If you wanted to do the transfer functions, you'll notice I can enter the numerator and denominator coefficients as vectors. There was the first one, and use this command residue. And you'll notice what does the residue give me? It gives me the poles. There they are, minus 0.3, minus 0.2, and 0 and the corresponding residues, 4, minus 6, and 2. And you see those will match the residues that we got when we did the derivation. Or for the second transfer function 1, there were the numbers. And what do you see? Poles at minus 12 and minus 8, as we expected, and residues, minus a half, minus 0 0.75, 0 0.25. Now you might be particularly interested in the last one, where we did approximation. So let's look at, for example, this one here which was the d2x plus 22 dx dt plus 40x equals 8. And let's look at the solution. And what do you see? 1 over 45 e to the minus 20t. And over here, minus 2 over 9 e to the minus 2t. And you'll see this 2 over 9 is very close to what we actually used. It's not exactly correct, but it's pretty close. What about this transfer function one that we tried? Let's have a look at that. So what do you notice? If we look at the residues, we said the residue of this minus 5 term was minus 0.2. The exact residue is actually minus 0.211. And you might say, to within engineering accuracy, does that difference really matter? And the residue we ignored, the 0.01, you say again, is pretty negligible. So maybe we were right. So... We've prevented some tutorial questions on overdamped second order.